For the next stage, we'll be adding some detail. For this portrait, it's going to be mostly around the eyes, nose and mouth area. So let's begin with the eyes. Uh, first thing I want to do is to create an overall greenness in the eyes. So I'm going to use the Sap Green Soft Pastel and being reasonably careful just to shade in the whole of the iris area. Again, trying to avoid putting that colour down too strongly and give it a little rub with the finger which pushes the pastel into the paper of course as well as keeping it fairly soft. I'm just going to leave a little opening there for the pupil so that I can see it when I come to put the detail in in a short while. And the same with the other eye using mostly the edge of the pastel for more control and fill it in gently, carefully so we have a uniform green tone in the eye. And again, rub it in with the finger. And then we'll move on to create some highlights in the eye. Now highlights are slightly different from reflections. Highlights are created when the light passes through the eye and creates a lighter area of green around the bottom in this case. So for this I'm going to use a yellow ochre. I'm just going to put a bit of yellow ochre over the green towards the bottom of the eye. You can put some little flecks in there if you want to, if you want to do that much detail, or just a soft little curve around the bottom of the eye will do. And this of course is highlighted green eye, so the yellow over that is just perfect. And we'll do the same on this eye, around the bottom. Just a little pool of yellow light almost around the bottom of the eye. Again, rub it in, push the pastel into the paper, soften the edges, and that's our highlight. The next thing we have to do is create a shadow underneath the eyelid. So for this we're going to use the black. Now be very careful with the black, but it is soft and quite strong. So be very gentle with it, starting from just under the eyelid, hardly touching the paper. Try to carefully create a curve around the top of the eye and gently bring it down to create a shadow. Then use your finger, a little finger is probably good for this, and softly drag it down over the green so that we have a shadow underneath the eyelid. Same on the other eye. Carefully trace around the top part of the eye and gradually bring a little soft shadow down underneath. Now you don't have to worry too much if, you've, uh, if your black has escaped outside of the outline because we can cover that later with our highlights. And then what we'll do is uh, just sketch in the pupil using the side of the pastel. It'll almost a diamond shape because the cats do have slip pupils of course. But rather than just create a straight line, we'll try to create a little diamond shape. Soften it off with the fingers again so it's not too harsh. So now we can put a reflection in. For the reflection, I'm just going to use the white soft pastel. Uh, we've got to bear in mind that the eye is curved outwards as well as around, so the reflection needs to represent that. So we'll start off uh, on the left-hand side if the light's coming from the top left, for example, we'll start off with a little patch of light, could be the sun, just on the left-hand side, and then use the edge of the pastel below the shadow just to create a little curved reflection over there and gently tap it in with the finger. We don't want to smudge it away too much. And we'll do the same on the other eye. So a little dab of light there, and a little curved tail almost curving across the pupil. Now what we can do is go back with the black and just sharpen up those edges a wee bit more. So using the edge of the black pastel, try to create a reasonably sharp edge around the green iris of the eye. And again, we don't have to fret if that line isn't perfect because we can correct it with our highlights at the end. So what we're after in this case is more effect than too much detail. We want a nice soft kitten effect. So again, with the side of the finger, or with your little finger, just soften off those edges a wee bit. And then we'll bring a little bit of a shadow down into the corner of the eye, which is the tear duct area and soften that off again. 
we just adjust the pupils a little touch while we're here. And then we can do the same with the nostrils. Not too strong because that nose is quite pink. So let me just uh, touch up the eye rim there a wee bit. Nostrils, quite pink. So remember, we only want a little touch of black in there. And the same on this line. Rub it in. Bring it down into the cleft between the lips. And again, a little soft, almost inverted curve for the bottom lip. Remember that uh, line down the nose connects with the cleft in between the top lips. OK, so that's all prepared now, ready for our final highlights. For the final stage, we're going to put on some key highlights and help to bring this portrait to life. We're going to use the soft white pastel again. And starting around the ear, we can see that the, the fur on that ear is being caught and highlighted by the sun. So we need to establish that highlight. At the same time, using the edge of the soft white pastel, we can create a little bit of fur. We don't need too much. This is uh, more a portrait of soft values, soft colors, and key highlights. So fur texture doesn't really come into it too much. In many ways, the more fur texture you put onto a young animal, like the kitten, for example, the less of the softness that will appear through the end. So we can now stroke in some of the hairs inside the ears, some of the hairs below the ears, and again, rub them. And when you're doing hairs such as this, or an outline of fur texture, always rub from the base of your stroke. That will leave the ends fairly sharp. Again, we're not looking for ultra fine detail, but a little bit of texture around the edges will help. So we can move now in around the eyes. We have a highlight in the brow just above each eye, which is about here. So not too much in the way of sharp detail, more of a soft highlight, and around here too. And again, stroke it with your finger as you work through. It's probably a good idea to clean your fingers at this uh, before you start this stage as you've been working with the black. Now, most of this side of the face is in shadow, so we don't need to touch it an awful lot. What I want to do is just to strengthen the shape of the eye, maybe knock back some of that black outline with an edge of white, particularly around the nose, and the eyelashes above the eye. So this will help just to diffuse some of that black a little bit. Again, stroke it with the finger. A little bit of light area on the cheekbones below the eye. Very, very softly. You can see that helps to diffuse the black outline too. The nose itself, well, you've got a light patch of fur coming down the nose. Just down the side. We want to keep some of the grey and pink showing through, of course, because the hair on the cat's nose, especially on a white cat's nose, is very fine and you will see quite a lot of skin through it. Let's move around to the other eye. Again, we have this eyebrow, which is lighter, not too much detail, so use a, a softer side of your pastel for this rather than a sharp edge. And rub it. Rubbing helps maintain the softness, of course, as well as pushing the pastel into the paper. And then around the eye again, so reinforce the shape of the eye coming down into the tear duct. The highlight of the cheekbone below the eye. And I'll keep rubbing all the way through. Down into the cheek area on the side of the nose. And do try to keep it as soft as you can at this stage. Remember, it's a soft, furred, young kitten. No hard lines on there at all. And then we'll bring that softness, that soft white around the nose, into the cheeks between the whisker follicles, the areas that the whiskers grow out of, and they will be kept as sort of grey-pink value. So just bring the shape of the cheek out 
around the muzzle, a little soft furry edge to the bottom of the, the upper cheeks, a nice soft edge around the nose here, and that cheek as well. Again, this cheek is more in shadow, so we don't need to emphasize that highlight too much. And down into the chin, nice, soft, furry chin. We'll come back into the side of the face. And then once we've got that cheekbone shape established with the highlights, then we can bring the white fur all around the head, around the ear. Again, because this is a large area, we can use the side of the pastel to create this large area. We don't have to do it all in sharp detail. And then we've got a nice edge around the earlobe on that side. If you want to, come out a little bit from your outline to create a little bit of soft texture. Not too much. Remember, it's mostly about highlights, soft tones, and soft colors. And again, we can reinforce the shape of that ear. If you hairs below and inside the ears at the same time, and then get the highlight around the edge of the ear. This, of course, will help to bring the ears forward from the background gray tone of the paper. And we'll put some little highlights on the nose, softly again. Uh, maybe just soften that area a little bit more And then we'll put a highlight on her shoulder because this shoulder is facing the light. Also, it helps to separate the shoulder from the face. A little bit on that shoulder as well, just to bring it off the paper. And then the final touches. So the final touches, first of all, we'll start with the whiskers. Whiskers are very important, of course. And again, we'll find a, a sharp-ish edge to our pastel and just stroke a few whiskers coming out of the cheeks. No need to emphasize them too much and the same on that side. And again, if you can, just soften those whiskers at the base so that we have the impression that they're growing out of the cheeks and not laid on top of the cheeks. And finally, we'll just uh, have a, a squint to make sure our highlights or suitable. That's a good way of checking highlight tones by squinting at it, by the way. And then once I've squinted at it, I'll probably adjust the reflection in the eyes just a touch because I want those to be the strongest part. So before we finish our painting, adjust your final highlights, particularly in the eyes, knowing that uh, you're not going to be working on that anymore, so they will remain nice and sharp and fresh. Final squint, and there's our sketch completed. So there's our finished painting. If you have any uh, visible marks left over from your fingers or from the trace down paper, these can be easily eliminated using a softened putty rubber afterwards. So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed watching this, and I'll see you again next time. now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.